is just fantastic. Captain's Log, Subdates 22042.1.7 I'm going to put 5% into a small city bound with an unbreakable charm that Magog will cast for me, along with a functioning ecosystem. They will have to though worship Warrant Officer Crumble as a god. He'll hate that, so I'm definitely going to make it happen now. Welcome everyone to the exhibition of stupid people. Today we're going to start with Prince Harry and work our way across to Madonna. Some gigantic honkers, the World Health Organization, and then Vincent Kennedy McMahon. There would be a lot more, by the way, but I'm going to save those for another day, because in truth there are about 10 more topics, and I don't think I have enough time to make such a video for you, and I don't think enough people would watch it anyway. Just saying. With that in mind, though, salty comment aside, because of a recent, let's call it, decline, I have charitably dubbed it the shadow banning because of the increased number of comments telling me they're not getting my videos in their sub fee. I have made another channel, simply called Omegon 2 Electric Boogaloo. Cringy, I know. And it's possible I haven't been shadow banned, it's possible the repetitive nature of my content is a contributing factor. Let's just ignore the decline that is so sharp, shall we? In favour of that being the more reasonable assumption. If you could do me all a solid and go sub there, I will be uploading everything from here, there as well, but I'm also going to put additional content that won't be on this channel, because I do not believe those subjects would pop anywhere near as well on this channel as I think they could. So having them somewhere else and still being able to be active is what I would prefer. Thank you. Oh, it's also linked down below in the pinned comment. It'll be the top thing. Thank you. So to start, Prince Harry, he's deluded, okay? Deluded. Shortly before the Invictus Games began, Prince Harry, secretly, oh yes, super secret, went to visit his grandmother, the Queen, who turned 96 years old today, long may she reign, happy birthday, Lizzie. In a US television interview, he spoke about how this had allowed him the opportunity to check in on the monarch, to make sure that the right people were around her, saying to NBC News Today, it was really nice to catch up with her, and that the United States for the time being will be his home, because it has welcomed him with open arms. But just to continue with what he said with regards to the Queen, being with her, it was great. It was so nice to see her, she's on great form. She's always got such a great sense of humour with me, and I'm just making sure she's protected and got the right people around her. This interview hasn't been fully aired yet, so we don't get additional context. But let's talk about that quote for a moment because that quote, even if there was additional context, is not salvageable. Let's face it, it's cringy. Many analysts had the same response. Protected from what, you moron? Do you believe there's some clandestine Illuminati suddenly around her telling her what to do? She's 96 years old and barely able to function, yet still functions. She lost the love of her life last year during Corona Chan, and you didn't have the common decency to come and turn up for a memorial service. Because you're a selfish little plonker who prioritised not wanting the media in my life, but simultaneously having the media in my life over your own family. Because the accusations were so severe, even though none of it could have been proven, although I would say, you can just say, Prince Philip was racist, everyone will agree, even Queen Elizabeth will agree. You had nothing else to go on. If anyone has watched your cringy interviews, the one thing they've noticed from all of it is, you've embraced these newer ideas and behaviours and promoted them, but all of them are debunkable as bollocks, akin to that of the fake medicines that Jeff Holliday debunks on his channel on a regular basis. Some of the crap you promote, by the way, reminds me of Jilly Juice. Just saying. And by the way, all that additional security that you had to pay for to go to the Invictus Games, that's interesting, you went to that in the Netherlands, but you couldn't be asked to come to the United Kingdom. But then you did come in a super secret manner because the police wouldn't look after you. Who will protect you from the oikery and the peasantry and the plebeians? Oh, golly gosh. How frightening. You turned your back on this country. Did you really think for a second they'd even show you a iota of respect? The answer should be no, by the way. It was guaranteed when you didn't turn up to the Prince Philip Memorial Service. Little bitch. Moving on, let's talk about somebody in a clear state of obvious denial, Madonna. What you see on the screen now, for those who are watching, is a picture of Madonna as most of you would think she looks. Now, I've criticised her current appearance. This is not her current appearance. 
I criticised it because she's 63 years old and is clearly trying to look like someone in their mid-twenties that performs more predominantly within the R&B hip-hop genres of music, i.e., and this was something I only realised very recently, a white girl trying to look more urban, more ghetto, more from the block. It's a bit cliché, but actually at this point, it wasn't until recently that I realised, oh look, I'm actually right. The real giveaway was, more recently during the Easter holiday, Madonna put on her Instagram some pictures of her and her children painting Easter eggs and celebrating the holidays. Now, I never realised that she actually was doing this for other holidays as well, like Christmas, or the festive season for those who refuse to say Christmas. You're idiots too, by the way. So on the screen now is a more recent picture of Madonna. I am not going to now include pictures of her children's faces. I'm not that guy. But it didn't occur to me until I saw the picture that Madonna was clearly trying to appear as something that she is not. And no, I don't just mean younger than she is. There's also a racial motivation. And I find that fascinating. No, I'm not now saying that her children in any way are trying to make her black. No, not even slightly. I'm saying Madonna's trying to do it herself, which is pretty apparent considering the clear struggle to hold her face together in pictures where at 63 only her hands give away that she's 63 or white. And not photoshopped because apparently it only ends at the face. I find it fascinating because, and this is where I guess it's stupid, you are trying to be something you are not and in doing so, you make yourself look like somebody that the minute the trigger is, let's say, removed, and you suddenly stop applying the copious amounts of money effort into this product, it's going to come crashing down really hard on you. There are actresses in the United Kingdom who for decades used Botox so they would retain youthful looks. The moment they stopped, their faces resembled that of a screwed up crisp packet. So again, my criticism isn't so much about being racially motivated, it's entirely about trying to defy time. Time is immutable. You cannot defeat it, you cannot avoid it. You can either go gracefully, or you can go in a constant state of denial, because you're being either enabled, or you are so desperate to appear like something else for your kids. So you can perhaps empathise with them, which I also think is a key factor, that you're willing to forego the reasonable, let's say, path forward in favour of that which then in turn will bleed onto your children. They themselves will grow up being just like that if it isn't properly addressed. I'm not, of course, the parent to these children. I'm pretty sure Madonna's not to one of them if I remember the issues with adoption of one of those kids in particular. But I did find it somewhat fascinating when you look at what Madonna looks like to what she used to look like and then what she is surrounding herself with. That's not, by the way, a bad thing about the children, of course not. Don't try to infer that. But you know that's what Madonna is trying to do with herself. You see it with many pop stars who are themselves white, who then try and change their appearance to look more tan, to move away from what is their natural skin colour. I know it's bad to be white, by the way, I've heard about it, and yes, of course, within the next century, one can hope the dreaded white scourge will be bred out of existence. Do I need a sarcasm sign for that? Should we just move on to our honourable mention, who I'm going to call for this the TikTok tit thought. <laughs> Cute, right? Lucy Luxor. Lucy Luxor is a fellow YouTuber, but she's also on TikTok now. Very successful on TikTok, to be honest, and congratulations to you. I know of her because she has left rather nice comments on my videos covering the girls. But also, I have regularly in the past watched when she streamed with God the Good One, or had people like Nerdy Rodent on her channel. She does makeup tutorials, unboxings, reviews. On TikTok, she's a tit thought, but more recently featured in the news because her massive boobs kept her housebound for two years, because men had chased her down the street because of her gigantic norks, honkers, canockers, chesticles, breasticles. Do I need to continue? Now, of course, there are alternative methods for her 38 L's to get out of the house. And of course, I would want Lucy to be able to go to work. After all, she, like I, is self-employed. But I wanted to give her an honourable mention because I find her very amusing. And so I'm going to link her TikTok down below so you can watch things. But I'm going to play a very short clip from her TikTok where she showed she's even in the news and there's an article on her from The Mirror, a UK tabloid. Before we continue, 
to talk about the World Health Organization, who are complete and utter morons. So, um, this is happening. I'm f***ing everywhere. I'm not going to be able to leave the house now. Um, yep. There have been, during the war in Ukraine, casualties on many different sides. Russia themselves have lost their flagship, the Moskva, which I believe carried nuclear warheads. That's a bit tragic. They've also lost vast numbers of heavily armored tanks, two alleged inferior quality tanks Ukraine were using. They've lost vast numbers of generals and colonels, which tells me either they were arrogant or not as <laughs> deserving of the title as they had. Ukraine themselves have seen cities annihilated. Putin has made his threats quite clear. He could wipe out countries like the United Kingdom, so we need to back off. We're not going to, by the way. We're going to continue providing them the means to defend themselves, as is right. They are, after all, a sovereign nation. Another more notable casualty, allegedly, is Coach Redpill, who may well have been arrested for promoting pro-Russia propaganda in Ukraine. He had in the past Gonzalo Lira, promoted Russia Today within his own content and has appeared on that many times. So it doesn't surprise me that he would be in Ukraine when the war began and would still be espousing those beliefs. Because I think he thought, like many in fact, that Russia would steamroll Ukraine and he would be lauded as a hero and perhaps get more acclaim, fame and success. The moral to that story I guess is, if you are that desperate for clout, perhaps consider the repercussions of what you are trying to achieve, and through what means you are attempting to achieve them with. So how does this tie into the World Health Organization? Well, apparently, covering the Ukraine war is racist. And the reason why is because the global attention given to Putin's invasion shows us that the world does not give equal attention to black and white lives. Those comments come from the WHO chief, Tedros Adhanom, unpronounceable last name, who has said that other crises receive a fraction of the attention. Now there might well be a point to that, Tedros. There may well be that, and you're right to raise it. But you've chosen a very interesting moment to do so. Our attention is on Ukraine because if Russia take over Ukraine, what is to stop them taking other countries that were a part of Russia let's say in the 14th century. It's why they've already made threats to Sweden and Finland, one of whom is already trying to join NATO because they found it amusing that Russia would try and go to war with them again, and the other being Sweden, who I believe are debating this. Russia has, or the government in Russia, and by that I mean the megalomaniac in charge, this belief that NATO is inherently Nazi and would like to see it disbanded, similar to that of Jeremy Corbyn, the former leader of the opposition who would like to see NATO disbanded. Except Putin would very much like to steamroll other nations so he could have his empire back, whereas Corbyn would just like us all to resolve it through words. What I'd like to do now though, is point out some of the other crises that he is alluding to. One you have the Taliban recapturing Afghanistan, 23 million people there now facing starvation with an estimated 270,000 being displaced inside the country. Women and children are being targeted by the regime, with children being sold and their body parts in order to feed their families. Ethiopia, there is an issue between the federal government and the Tigray People's Liberation Front. In Syria, for more than a decade they have suffered civil war and ensuing humanitarian problems. More than 14 million people require humanitarian assistance with 27,000 children being killed in the conflict, and in Yemen, a Saudi-led coalition began military intervention in 2014, after an Iran-backed group took control of swaths of the country. This is what he's referring to, and he believes that these are as important, or more than important, than what Russia is doing to Ukraine. Just wanted to give you the context so you could understand how it's quite serious, but the wrong moment has been chosen. So shall we end this now with Vince McMahon? Because I don't want this video exceeding 20 minutes. Let's talk about Vince again. In wrestling for the longest time, kayfabe was one of the most important aspects of the business. It created a separation between the heels and the faces, the heels themselves not interacting with fans because it would break that window. It wasn't until the curtain call that kayfabe truly died. Up until then, superheroes were a thing in the form of the ultimate no-stamina warrior, and Hulk Hogan, 
a man with mostly chest and bicep and could only do three moves, one of them, two of them, three of them were just punching. Although he could drop kick on occasion, there's something. Vince likes to on a semi-regular basis show you just how fake wrestling is. Whether that be him going to WrestleMania and winning, whether that be him going to WrestleMania and, well, he, he botches a stunner. I wonder if he told himself off afterwards like he does every other wrestler for a botch. Maybe he has a body pillow with his face on do that. Although if the rumours are to be believed, he does not in fact sleep. All energy is absorbed through photosynthesis, and any, well, rest is akin to that of a space marine shutting down half his brain. Courtesy of podcasts, we get to see behind the curtain in a way that we didn't before, because either they are themselves legends talking about their experiences, or the person hosting the podcast is willing to ask the questions in a way that allows us to get the answers we need. Insert Stone Cold Steve Austin and his podcast, which I am quite a fan of. He had Vince on once, talked about being a pro wrestler, and Vince didn't like it. He's like, you're a sports entertainer. Like, shut up, wrestler. Sports entertainer is a cheap way of saying shit actor, which is usually what it is. I know some have made it sense, but they are few and far between. Let's all just admit that. Recently, Stone Cold had Bubba Ray Dudley, or Bully Ray, on the podcast. Bully Ray and Devon Dudley are one of the greatest tag teams of all time, winning tag titles with every major promotion they ever worked for. They innovated, they pioneered. Some of their matches are the greatest. The fact they still have their health intact is quite impressive. During this podcast, they spoke about how when they signed for the WWF at the time, they told Vince they are pure heels and will not be interacting with the fans, because that is how a heel should operate. Vince decided, kayfabe not real yo, so I'm going to market every aspect of your being. The only difference between you and the face is, you won't smile on your match. So what's going to happen? You're going to take photos with everyone. It doesn't matter if they like you or not. You're also going to sign autographs for literally everyone. Because again, you may be a heel out there on stage, but here, you wear a suit. You look prim, proper, and lovely, even if you do look like a hillbilly in a suit. Okay, because again, kayfabe doesn't matter, everyone. I found this interesting because while he has managed to make this into such a vast business worth so much money, a lot of the decisions that have got him there actually still do not make any sense. It does in one respect of being able to market your talent, of course. But when you're trying to market your talent a certain way on screen, to then completely nix that the moment they're not near the screen tells me that it is all fake. And that's what anyone with an IQ over two would agree with. But of course, I could be wrong. And honestly, I just wanted a reason to poke fun at Vince for a minute. I still can't get over how bad that stunner was. And to this day, he's still never been able to take a stunner well anyway. I think the last time he did one was for an anniversary of Raw. And when he did, he essentially just fell to the floor anyway. If it wasn't for Stone Cold holding his head, I think he would have just fallen backwards. Now, as we are done, I would love to know what you all think please do let me know in the comments down below. As we have been struggling of late, please smash the like. Please drive up the engagement by leaving an obligatory comment and perhaps even sharing the video on social media. I would really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a lovely day, everyone. And thank you very much for listening. Ta-ta.